Hello students, how are you all? Today we are going to study the chapter A Triumph of Surgery by James Harriet. But before we study the chapter, let's have a quick look at the biography of the author. Born on 3rd October 1916, James Alfred White, known by the pen name James Harriet, was a British veterinary surgeon and a writer, who used his many years of experiences as a veterinary surgeon to write a series of books, each consisting of stories about animals and their owners. He is best known for the semi-autobiographical works, beginning with If Only They Could Talk in 1970, which spawned a series of movies and television series. He died on 23rd February 1995. Well, now let me introduce you to the chapter. This story is about a dachshund dog named Tricky, who is the pet of a very rich lady named Mrs. Pumphrey. She loves her dog very much and is unable to refuse him anything he wants. Tricky is fond of eating ice cream, cakes and chocolates. So one day, when Mrs. Pumphrey is out with Tricky for a walk, the narrator sees them and stops to talk. While talking to Mrs. Pumphrey, he realizes that she has been overfeeding Tricky and has been giving him things that he shouldn't eat. Due to which, Tricky has started looking like a bloated sausage. Soon, Tricky got unwell and Mrs. Pumphrey had to call Mr. Harriet, that is the narrator, for help. She does not want to send Tricky away, but the only way suggested by Mr. Harriet, the veterinary surgeon, is to get him hospitalized for 15 days. Uh, then the story unfolds into how he gets well. Now let's move to the detailed explanation of the text. The narrator starts telling us as how he was worried about Tricky the pet dog of Mrs. Pomfrey. The narrator Mr. Harriet stops his car as he sees Tricky with his mistress on the road because he is shocked to see Tricky looking like a bloated sausage. He has become very fat. His eyes are red and watery. Mrs. Pomfrey, Tricky's owner, starts giving explanations. She told Mr. Harriet that she thought that Tricky was malnourished because he did not have any energy and excitement. She told him that she gives Tricky malt, cod liver oil and a bowl of horlicks at night, apart from his regular meals, so that he could sleep at night. Although she gave him so much to eat, she says that she doesn't give him much to eat. Then the narrator asks her if she has cut down on his sweets as he had asked her to do. She replies that she did it for a while but she felt that he was getting weaker and thus she had to stop being so harsh with him. Also she says that she is unable to refuse him cakes and chocolates as those were his favorite things. Now then the narrator understood Tricky's problem. The dog was very greedy and could eat at any time of the day. He did not know how to say no to food when his stomach was full. The narrator also thought to himself of all the things that Mrs. Pumphrey would not have mentioned which she fed Tricky. Again the narrator asked Mrs. Pumphrey whether Tricky was exercising to which Mrs. Pumphrey replies that she does take him out for walk once in a while, but he is not playing his ring throwing exercise, as the gardener who takes him out to play is not coming these days because of pain in his lower back. The narrator seriously explained Mrs. Pumphrey that if she would not put a check on Tricky's eating habits and doesn't include regular exercises, he would soon fall ill. He told her that she should stay strong and strict with him and put him on a diet. 
Mrs. Pomfrey accepted that. Although she knew that Mr. Harriet was right, but it was too difficult for her to refuse him for anything. But then, she left the place as if she was now ready to follow the new routine properly. Mr. Harriet was watching them go and looking at Tricky walking unsteadily. The narrator was also looking at the tweed coat that Tricky was wearing. He had a wardrobe full of these coats and had also rain coats for the rainy days. This line also suggests that Mrs. Pomfrey was a rich lady as she had a lot of money to spend on her dog. But the narrator knew that soon he would be receiving a call about Tricky falling ill. And it came. The call came after a few days. Mrs. Pomfrey was very upset as Tricky was not eating anything, not even his favorite dishes, and was vomiting frequently. He didn't even want to do anything. Being a veterinary doctor, the narrator knew that the only way to get Tricky well was to get him out of the house for a few days. He then suggested Mrs. Pomfrey that it would be good to get Tricky hospitalized and keep him under observation for 15 days. Upon hearing this, Mrs. Pomfrey nearly fainted. She was sure that if Tricky did not see her every day, he would surely die. But the narrator kept his words. He told her that this was the only option as Tricky was very ill. The narrator thought it would be best to avoid any delays and get him to the hospital as soon as possible. He went to their house and even though Mrs. Pomfrey was crying because she did not want her dog to go away from her, he took the dog wrapped it in a blanket and put him in the car. At Mrs. Pomfrey's house, the maids were then woken up and asked to get out all Tricky's stuff. His stuff included things like his day bed, night bed, favorite cushions, toys, rubber rings, breakfast bowl, lunch bowl and his snake bowl. Mr. Harriet knew that so much stuff won't fit in his car, so he started rushing things. As the doctor was leaving with Tricky, Mrs. Pomfrey threw many a coats that Tricky used to wear in the car. As the narrator was turning the car, he saw through the rear view mirror that everyone was crying. He patted the little helpless animal who responded by wagging his tail. The narrator then thought and told Tricky that he knew that Tricky did not have any energy, but he surely had a way to get him better. As soon as they reached the hospital, all the other dogs gathered around the doctor. Tricky looked at all of them, and when the doctor put him down on the carpet, he couldn't even move. The other dogs then sniffed him and thought to themselves that he was a very uninteresting object and thus left. Then the narrator made the bed for Tricky in a warm box along with the other dogs. For two days, the narrator kept him just on water and nothing else. On the second day, he roamed around looking at the place around him. And on the third, he was able to make noise to let the people in the hospital know that he too wanted to go out with the other dogs. When the narrator opened the door, Tricky quickly came out and was surrounded by Joe, who was a greyhound, and his friends. Again after sniffing him for a moment, all of them left for the garden where Tricky followed them. Later in the evening, the narrator was present at the dinner time and was watching all of them, especially Twaston, as he was slopping the food. All of them were eating with great speed because they knew 
that if they didn't finish quickly, then the other dog, after finishing his meal, would come to eat their meal. When everybody finished their food, Tricky went around looking at the shining bowls and licked a few bowls. The very next day, an extra bowl was put for him and the narrator was happy to see him running towards his bowl. Then, he really started getting better. He did not require any medicine and started playing with the other dogs the whole day. They all used to play with each other, bump into each other, walk over each other and squash each other. All the other dogs accepted him as a family member. Although he was very different from others, as he was very well taken care of by his owner and the others were not. He also used to fight for his meals with his fellow dogs who were much larger in size than him. At night, he would also hunt rats in the hen house. He was enjoying, as he had never done such things before. All this while, Mrs. Pumphrey used to call more than 12 times a day to inquire about Tricky. Mr. Harriet used to avoid questions about the coats, beds, etc. But he told her that Tricky was doing very good and was recovering very fast. Mrs. Pumphrey wanted Tricky to recover fast. Therefore, she started sending two dozen eggs every day for him. But Mr. Harriet and his partners would have two eggs each for breakfast. Then, to improve the quality of blood, Mrs. Pumphrey started sending in bottles of wine. Let me tell you children, smoking and drinking is injurious to health. I don't support smoking and drinking but I have to teach because it is in the chapter so then to improve the quality of blood Mrs. Pumphrey started sending in bottles of wine then it became Mr. Harriet's habit to have two glasses of wine before lunch and a few along with it then Mrs. Pumphrey started sending in brandy at that time Mr. Harriet was not able to believe that Mrs. Pumphrey wanted them to give brandy to Tricky. They shared it amongst themselves. Some days, Mr. Harriet used to feel very happy as he would start his day with extra eggs. Then, he would have a few glasses of wine in the afternoon and then would end the day with brandy in the evening. Because of all the things that were being sent for Tricky, Mr. Harriet was really tempted to keep him as a permanent guest at the surgery. He really wanted that Tricky should stay with them forever. But he realized that Mrs. Pumphrey, who was like a mother to Tricky, was really suffering and really wanted Tricky to come back soon. After 15 days, Tricky was ready to go back home and Mr. Harriet called up Mrs. Pumphrey to come and pick him up. Within few minutes, a long black limousine, that is limo car, came outside. When the driver opened the door, Mrs. Pumphrey was sitting inside anxious as well as excited. She asked with nervousness if Tricky was getting better. To which Mr. Harriet replied in positive. Then Mr. Harriet went inside to get tricky. When Mr. Harriet went to the garden behind the house, he saw all the dogs moving around in the garden and tricky was sitting between them. He had recovered wonderfully in two weeks. He was looking much healthier playing with the other dogs and his chest was touching the ground. He had become a muscular dog within two weeks. When Mr. Harriet took Tricky to the front of the house, he saw that the driver was still holding the door of the car. And as soon as Tricky saw his mother like mistress, he was overjoyed. 
he ran away and jumped into the lap of Mrs. Pomfrey and started licking her face, barking in excitement. While all this was happening, the driver and Mr. Harriet got all his stuff out to the car which had not been used during the treatment in the last 14 days. When Mrs. Pomfrey was leaving, she leaned out of the window and said to Mr. Harriet with tears of joy in her eyes that she could not thank him enough for what he had done. She said, this is a triumph of surgery. Indeed, children, this was the victory of surgery. Though the surgery was not that operation, but the operation here was to bring back the dog's health. And yes, it was possible with the help of proper diet and exercises that the veterinary surgeon, Mr. Harriet, suggested for the dachshund dog named tricky. So here we end up with the chapter. Hope you understood. Thanks for watching the video.